What would happen if you could stop worrying so much about what your team was doing all day and instead focus in on what you're supposed to be doing to move your business forward? Sounds like a dream, but right now you're living the nightmare of having to overcoach, overhandhold, and overcheck in on your team's work. Let's put an end to that and instead roll out super clear five hour work plans drum beats, and more of my signature tools that drive accountability and self-sufficiency deep into your team. All you have to do is join a Leadership Lab program, and I'll help you turn your team troubles into triumphs. You'll be learning and growing alongside some peers that will become valuable business friends. So why not go beyond this podcast and join us? It could be the smartest thing you do this year. Book a call with me and see what program would best fit you over at the website, stackingyourteam.com slash programs. Welcome to Stacking Your Team, a show for entrepreneurs who are ready to step into the CEO role of their business by attracting and retaining key talent. Hey there, I'm Natalie Ekdahl, host of the Biz Chicks podcast. Our clients and community are rapidly expanding their businesses and need support as they stack their teams. Through on-air coaching calls, training episodes, and interviews, we will share insight on how to hire, fire, and inspire team members who will contribute to the long-term success of your business. Your incredible host, Shelley Warren, leverages her background growing and leading teams in multiple organizations, including a Fortune 50 corporation. Whether you are hiring for the first time or expanding your team locally or virtually, join us each week so we can set you and your team up for success. So are you ready to stack your team? Here's Shelly. Hey, biz chicks. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. I have some exciting news for you. Biz Chicks is the presenting sponsor at the Business Among Moms Success Summit, or BAM for short, which is taking place on May 18th in Bellevue, Washington. That's just outside of Seattle. Yes, so come join us. You'll meet Natalie and see her participate as a panel member, along with BAM founder, Julie Fry. You'll also hear BizChicks members, Nikki Rush and Jamie Slutsky and Sarah Frank, who are also speakers. And guess who else is a speaker? Yes, ma'am, me. Julie has designed a fabulous live event with three different tracks for you to participate in. The first track is Biz Foundations, which are essentials for your business success. Track number two is Scale Your Biz, which are strategies for outsourcing, hiring, and growth. And yep, that's the track that I'll be speaking in. And the third track is Online Biz, which are trends and strategies for online marketers. And guess what else? Natalie and I are hosting a one-day in-person mastermind on the Saturday following the conference with a meetup too. So check out the show notes for details on how you can get your ticket to the BAM Success Summit Conference, how to register for the mastermind, and how to find out information about the meetup. We would love to meet you for real, in person, in Seattle, That place that I've always wanted to go to ever since I saw that movie. You know the one. Before we begin today's show, I want to give a few shout outs to some people who have left a review. I was so excited. So thank you so much to Pageant Press who said, Thank you, Shelly, for sharing your tips and wisdom about stacking a team. I'm beyond excited to see where this takes my company this year. Me too. Keep me posted, Pageant Press. And thank you to Darlene, who said, Shelly brings easy to implement encouraging advice. 
She makes what seems so complicated seem simple and possible. I love people and I value them, but I've struggled with hiring. Shelly helps me understand where I've gone wrong. I'm thrilled that this podcast is being of help to you. Keep those reviews coming. It really helps other people find us. So what's on the agenda for today? Well, I'm serving up some of my favorite compelling interview questions to help you use facts along with your intuition to shortlist your candidates. We're going to dive into those questions and I'll give you some insight on what you should be listening for. You'll understand that what your candidates don't tell you is just as valuable as what they do tell you. And stay tuned at the end of the show where I'll tell you how you can get a copy of these questions so that you're all set to host your next interview. So are you ready to stack a team? Then let's get started. When we think about hosting an interview, what can often stall us is not knowing what kind of questions to ask. And, you know, people tell me all the time that they come up with the most brilliant questions after the interview is over. Hey, that happens a lot. So what we want to consider is that hosting an interview is really hosting a conversation where your job is to prompt the person to open up and talk. So they talk, you listen. You lean in to listen even harder. And when it's appropriate, you ask more clarifying questions that build and keep that conversation going. So before you start any interview, you want to consider how you're going to take notes. So you want to hit the record if you're doing a video conference or bring someone with you to be your scribe so that you can focus in and give some true, honest FaceTime with the person that you're meeting. So let's get down to some of these juicy questions. Here's the first one. What compelled you to apply for our job posting? Now, I ask this question every single time because what I'm wanting to hear are their responses. And sometimes you'll get things like, oh, you know, I saw the list of responsibilities and I thought I'd be a fit. Or my company's downsizing. So I've been looking for a while now for something like this. Or I'm looking for a fresh start and your company sounds interesting. So all three of those different types of answers warrant more follow-up questions. So the person that said, I saw the list of responsibilities and thought I'd be a fit, you want to seek to find out why does this person think they're such a fit for us? And the person that's got caught in a downsizing, you want to see What is their attitude? Are they still bitter? Are they feeling confident that they're going to be able to rise and find a new role? And, you know, what was the actual circumstances, if they can share anything with you about that? And the person that said that they're looking for a fresh start, you want to dig in and find out, hmm, why are they looking for a fresh start? And when they said, well, your company sounded interesting, you want to dig in some more and find out what was so interesting about it. The next question you want to ask is, what did you love the most about your current role? I love asking this question because I find it's really telling in terms of finding out for you if anything that they share matches anything that you've listed on your job posting. So you want to hear what they said about the tasks or the ownership areas and really listen in for the level of responsibility that they listed off as their most favorite. Do you have anything like that that you're offering for them? Because if you don't, then they're going to become bored quickly, disenchanted quickly, and essentially they're not a fit. So listen in to hear the kind of work and also Listen in to see if they're talking at all about the team culture and any aspects of their leader and how the team communicated. So it's not really just about the kind of work that they got to do in their most current role, 
But what were all the parameters surrounding their work life that was a great fit for them and their values? Question number three. Of the list of what you'll be doing that we outlined in the posting, what do you think will be a slam dunk for you? I ask this question a lot, mainly because I'm trying to lighten up the vibe of the interview. And I'm also looking to see where the confidence starts showing up in an interview. I mean, most people come to an interview nervous. And whether they're doing the interview through video conferencing or whether it's a face-to-face interview, they're trying to put their best foot forward and they're really paying attention to the questions you're asking and you know trying to show up like a great candidate. So when you ask them, based on that list that we outlined in the job posting, what do you know or, or what are you feeling great about would be a slam dunk for you, that's when you'll really start to hear about their confidence and the skill sets that they know that they really do well in. So then as they're listing this, what you want to actually follow up with and listen to here is if they back any of that up with an example. And if they don't, ask for one. The next question I love to ask is, would you describe yourself as a planner, a thinker, or a let's just get it done person? Most people are going to stumble on this question, mainly because they're trying to consider what you're looking for, and they're trying to give you an answer of what you're looking for. But in reality, you're wanting to see that they are comfortable enough in their own skin that they'll tell you how they prefer to work. And those kind of answers are so invaluable to you, especially If you're trying to compare this candidate to the type of work and the type of current team members that you've got, if you're wanting to balance out your work team, or if you're trying to find someone that's going to come in to cause a pivot in your culture, this is where you're going to want to find out, does this person truly understand who they are and what sandbox they like to play in the most? There's really no wrong answer here. There really is not. For someone who describes themselves as a planner, that's great for someone in a role that's going to be doing project management or who's going to have a budget to manage or who's somebody who's going to be planning out a full-blown forecasting for a quarter or a year or anything that takes time where they actually have to have attention to detail and think about next steps and what is the logical steps. For someone who describes themselves as a thinker, to me, that tells me that they're a great problem solver because they're going to want to consider and do some research and take some time to think about what their next right move would be and what is the next logical step. And think a lot about the customers and the clients and where the business is going. The person that says, let's just get it done, that's a great person too. Because we all need people who can speak in a concise way, who can pull a team back on track if there's any drift, or pull a project back on track if there's any kind of drift. So planners, thinkers, and just get it done people are all great people. And we all need those kind of peoples on our team, especially if we're trying to create a well-balanced, diverse team. So just listen in to hear how comfortable they are in their own skin and how they describe how they love to work. Question number five, what would you consider to be your greatest strengths? Now, here's your chance to ask for examples of a time where they played to their strengths and look to see how excited they are when they're telling you those stories. How are they describing the work? How are they describing the actions that they took? And how are they describing the actual outcome of the work that they led when they were in their zone of genius, when they were in their happy place? when they felt like they were in control of their destiny. Look to see if they light up when they tell these stories. Look to see what different aspects of the work or the problem or the client or the service that really got them excited. And while they're telling you these stories, lean into it and continue to prompt them to tell you more. The next question 
what are your opportunity areas? If they don't immediately understand what you're driving at, you can rephrase this to be, what do you know you need to improve upon? Now, here's where you'll need to ask some follow-up questions. You want to be able to find out how they learned, how they recovered, and what was the final outcome. And, you know, some people, when you ask them this question, they're going to want to take the easy way out. I get this a lot. They'll give me an answer like, well, I think my opportunity areas, I work too hard. Or what I need to improve upon is I take on more work than my team members. Or some people tell you that they go over and above for their team or their clients in a like a martyr type tone to it. So here's where I like to keep the conversation going by asking them things like, how do you know you're working too hard? What generally happens when you take on more work than your team members? Tell me a story about a time you went over and above for your team or your client, right? So keep that conversation going because what we don't want to have is just a short, quip answer that they haven't really given themselves some time to even think about where are their opportunity areas, right? We can't be great at everything. And people who know that understand that a team is best designed with players stacked up around them who have strengths that the team can then rely on, people on the team that you can defer to for a specific expertise area. Trying to be the rock star on the team and having all the strengths is not someone that you want on your team. So listen in to hear what they think their opportunity areas are and whether or not you think that opportunity area is worth looking into a little bit farther and whether you can work with somebody who has that opportunity area. Because let's face it, we all have them. The next question is, how would your team describe you? Now, this is always interesting for me because more often than not, people will stall on this. So that's when I'll say to them, well, when was the last time you had a performance review? Or when was the last time you received some recognition for the work that you've done? Or, you know, when was the last time that your team thanked you for something that you did for them? And so s- people don't always feel comfortable tooting their own horn. Most people don't feel comfortable listing off a laundry list of how much their team loves them. So you may have to prompt them a couple of times for them to tell you how their team would describe them. They may say things like, well, my team would say that I'm hardworking or I'm a team player or I'm easy to get along with. So here's where you need to follow up by asking them, what's your definition of hardworking? Or why do they believe you're hardworking? Or when, they, when you describe yourself as a team player, tell me, what roles do you typically play on your team? And if someone is describing you as easy to get along with, Tell them why you think that is, right? So you're wanting them to tell you more than just these short little descriptors. You're trying to have them describe a situation, tell you a story, and give you an example of why their current team base would describe them in this way. Question number eight, what was the last new skill you learned? They will usually stop and think about this for a little bit. And I always love this question because it tells me immediately about people's comfort zone in being self-learners and self-taught. And oftentimes people will tell you a story about a skill they learned that has nothing to do with work. Some people will tell you a story about a sport that they learned or some type of new technology that they learned around the house, or maybe even something that they learned to help their community. So listening in to the last new skill they learned, follow that up by asking them, how did you learn it? And then sit back and and have them tell you how they actually learned it. Did somebody show them? Was it something they learned themselves through YouTube? Was this something they just learned through trial and error? And then asking them, are you still using it now? And have you taught it to anyone else? And if they taught it to anyone else, you want to know, how'd that go? Because what you're looking to find is, 
is this person trainable and can this person teach? So you'll want to hear things like, I followed the job aids, or I followed the standards of operations, or I whipped out the instructions, or I Googled it, or I took it apart and put it back together to see how it works. So you're listening for the story on how this adult learns. And when you understand how that adult learns, you'll better understand whether or not that person's going to be able to learn alongside you and your team in your business. Question number nine, describe your least favorite client or team member that you had to work with. And this is one of those questions where their response is actually telling you more about them than it's telling you about the person that they're describing. You want to listen for stories about how they like to be communicated with, whether or not they like deadlines or not, any issues that they have with workflow, any stories about recognition or lack of recognition. And then you'll also want to hear about how they solve problems and how they work with difficult people, or how they work through complaints, inquiries, people that are not an easy fit on a team. How they answer this question is really showing you how they would describe their ideal work scenario, where things become easy for them. So have fun with that one. Number 10. In what way do you think you can immediately add value to our team? You know, this speaks to the understanding of your business. If they come back with an answer that's not compelling enough for you, that doesn't get you excited or kind of feels like lukewarm, then it's a tell that they don't understand your needs. They've done no research about you, your business, your customer base, your products, your services. Every single person that comes to an interview should have already visualized themselves working alongside you in your company. They should have gone and done some research about you and your business, the current state of your business, the current customer base you serve, and be able to come and at least talk about with some familiar vocabulary about your products and your services and what you're trying to do in the world. If they have a lukewarm answer where you know for a fact that what they've just listed off is how they're immediately going to add value to their, to your team. And it's an answer that says to you, we already have somebody doing that. Or that's kind of a juvenile task to be taking on. Or, you know, it's just not getting excited about having them join your team. Then there's the tell right there. And here's a bonus question. Tell me about a time where you thought something was going to be easy and yet it turned out to be a struggle to reach that goal. This question is one of my all-time favorites because it opens the door for that person to tell more about themselves as a person. Because this question does not need to have a work-related answer. This question can have a personal answer. It could have been somebody who was struggling with a fitness goal or a health goal or somebody who was relocating, or somebody who had an issue with a family member, or someone who was just trying to learn a new skill, who they thought it was going to be super easy, and it turned out not to be. So what you're listening in for is how did they solve that problem? How did they overcome the challenge? What was their attitude? What was their behavior? What action did they take? And what action did they not take? And did they actually hit their goal? Because oftentimes in life, the lesson that can be most impactful is when we don't hit our goal. We often think that success only happens or the only true success stories are the ones where we hit the goal or we hit the stretch goal. But in reality, not hitting a goal is just as memorable and just as impactful and can be a real turning point for people. So this question can be a real plethora of juicy information about this person, what their values are, what makes them tick, what gets their mojo going, and you'll quickly be able to see whether or not this person would be a nice add 
to your current team dynamics that you have. So here's the thing. I am not a fan of the two-part, three-part, and four-part question series. It freaks people out. And they usually remember only the last part. So you're always repeating yourself anyways. So you want to break your questions up and give them ample time to let people think. And your last question should always, always be, is there anything else that you want to add that you feel you didn't get a chance to share? I love watching this question unfold. Some people will just want to wrap up and hightail it out of there. Others will come prepared and they'll have a few questions to ask you, which is great because you're keeping the conversation going and it's showing you that they've done some research and they value the worth. So therefore they're, they're valuing their time spent with you. So they're coming with some questions to ask you. Others will want to reiterate a fact or qualification or tell you something unique about their experience. And this is great too, because it's really about trying to keep the conversation going so that you maximize every opportunity you have within that interview window. Either way, you want to have a system where you're sure to ask each candidate the same questions. You're going to add more as it makes sense with the conversation, but you want to ensure that the basic foundation questions are always asked for every single candidate because you're going to need that data to help you score the candidates, which will help you make a decision based on facts, not simply emotion. So come up with an easy scoring, a one to five, make sure somebody is keeping you on track to hit all those same foundation questions for every single candidate that comes through. And then you'll have way more data and you'll feel so much better about moving forward with your hiring decision. Then you're going to let them know what to expect next and thank them for talking with you today. So I hope this looks like helped you. And don't forget, you can always visit bizchicks.com. And remember, we spell chicks with an X here. So Visit www.bizchicks.com slash interview questions to get your download of these. I look forward to next week where I'll bring you another episode designed for people just like you who are growing their businesses by hiring top talent. So please take a minute to subscribe and share. And if you have a hiring or a team issue that you'd like some insight on, just click the work with me button on the website to find out how you can book a strategy session with me. I'd love to learn more about you and your business and help you stack your team. See you next week. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Stacking Your Team. Please click subscribe in your podcast app so you never miss an episode and head on over to bizchicks.com slash join to get access to the private Facebook group we host for women entrepreneurs. It is a virtual gathering space for the kindest, smartest, and most savvy women entrepreneurs around the globe who are scaling their businesses and stacking their teams. The group is free to join. And when you do, you get access to the complimentary downloads associated with both of our podcasts. We include the links in our weekly newsletter. Again, go to bizchicks.com slash join. That's B-I-Z-C-H-I-X dot com slash J-O-I-N to get access. And listen to us every Tuesday for a new episode of Stacking Your Team and Thursdays for a new episode of the BizChicks podcast. No matter where you have come from or where you are going, you are the leader your company needs and you are worthy of being CEO. Stay focused, BizChicks, and go stack your team. Yeah.